The maned wolf has the body of a wolf, the face of a fox, and the legs of a deer. But it's neither fox, nor wolf, nor deer. I think it's safe to say it's anything but normal. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. Despite sharing a name with the wolf, the maned wolf is not closely related to wolves at all, and in fact is the only species in the genus Chrysoceon. A 2009 study found that the maned wolf's closest relative is the extinct Falkland Islands wolf, both of which shared a common ancestor about 7 million years ago. Its closest living relative, however, is neither wolf, fox, or coyote, but the bush dog which I'm sure you can tell by its short legs and snout. Maned wolves dwell in the grassland and shrubland of South America. Not only are they the largest canid native to South America, but they are the tallest wild canid in the world. Their legs are long and slender, and their movement often resembles that of a deer more so than a wolf, as they have very long and exaggerated foot and ankle bones. The average adult male maned wolf weighs 23 kilos and stands 90 centimeters tall at the shoulders, compared to the much heavier gray wolf, which weighs double the maned wolf and stands 80 centimeters tall at the shoulder. And the reason for their increased elevation is evolution. Similar to the common theory that humans evolved to stand up so they could see over tall grass, the the maned wolf likely evolved its extra long legs in order to see over the tall grass in the grasslands of South America. Much more so than actual wolves, maned wolves are omnivorous. Their diet is made up of between 50 and 75% vegetation. They eat a lot of sugarcane and tubers, but their meal of choice is what's been nicknamed the wolf apple. The wolf apple resembles tomatoes in shape and composition, but an eggplant in texture and color. This diet of vegetation has led them to being a part of a symbiotic relationship with leafcutter ants. Their role? Eating and pooping. They'll eat a bunch of wolf apples, excrete the remains, at which point the leafcutter ants carry the dung to special fungus chambers for harvesting. Before they take the dung into their hills, however, they remove the seeds, spreading them throughout the wild. If you want to learn more about leafcutter ants or other ants, be sure to check out this video that I did a couple weeks ago. When maned wolves do hunt, they hunt small rodents, rabbits, birds, and sometimes fish. Their large, fox-like ears are used to tune into the scurrying sound of their next meal. They don't chase their prey, but rather they stalk them and wait for the perfect moment to pounce. When they do, they go for the neck or back, violently shaking their prey until dead. Again, unlike actual wolves, maned wolves are not pack hunters, and are by nature lone wolves, or lone not wolves, whatever you prefer. They spend most of their lives alone, meeting up solely to mate. When they do find a partner, they develop a monogamous relationship. Although they only get together with their chosen partner between April and June to mate. Not a bad deal. Together, the monogamous pair will defend the territory of around 30 square kilometers. The coolest thing about the maned wolf, however, isn't their deer-like legs. It's their roar bark. It's like a combination of a lion's roar and a Rottweiler's bark. It's just awesome. They only make three noises. This amazing roar bark, usually heard at dusk, which is used to communicate over long distances, a high-pitched whine used in greeting, and a growl during fights. The majority of their communication, however, is done through scent. They've been called the skunk wolf before, and for a very good reason. Their urine, which is used to mark their territory, has an incredibly strong smell. Which, weirdly enough, smells very similar to marijuana. In fact, the scent is so similar that in 2006 at the Rotterdam Zoo in the Netherlands, the police were called to the zoo to try and track down a pot smoker, only to find the pot smoker was just a main wolf marking its turf. Researchers have found the urine to contain pyrazines, which are hexagonal combinations of nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen that separate from the urine and leave a scent in the air. In the case of the main wolf, the high pyrazine levels in their urine, emitting the marijuana yeast smell, is likely used as a super long-lasting, this is my turf, sign. Which can be smelled at up to a mile away and can say anything from keep out, to I'm ready to breed, to hey, wanna play Rocket League? Okay, maybe not the last one. What animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching!